Good afternoon to all. In this webinar, as you all know, is being organized on Bhopal gas tragedy. We have with us our special guest uh, who will be delivering the lecture on the topic. I first request our assistant regional director, Dr. P. Nambudri Parsel, for formal welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Good evening to all. First of all, I am very happy to welcome all the participants to this virtual lecture session. Today, we have a session, special session on Popal tragedy. For this, we invited our chief guest. Professor Sandeep Kulkarni is the head of the department from Environmental Science Department, KG Sumaya College of Arts and Science, Commerce. So on behalf of Indira Gandhi National Open University Regional Center, Mumbai, I welcome you, sir, for this very informative session. I hope this session will be helpful to the public, make the awareness about this uh, pollution and its consequences. At the same time, I welcome our Igno Regional Director, Dr. E. Krishna Rao. He is very much interested to organize this meeting. So on behalf of Regional Center, I welcome you also, sir. And I welcome all the participants, learners, and public, those who are attending this meeting, to make use of this information is going to deliver by our guest, Professor Sandeep. With these things, once again, I welcome all your things. I will hand over, hand over to next part. Thank you. Fezang, you can take it. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, now I request our regional director in charge, Dr. E. Krishna Rao, sir, for uh, initial remarks. Uh, thank you. Um, today's uh, chief guest, Dr. Sandeep Kolkarniji, my colleague, Dr. Nambudripan, and the regional center staff. At outset, I welcome you all for this online webinar on Bhopal gas tragedy, which was happened in 1984. So many people have lost their lives Indira Gandhi National Open University is organizing this type of online lectures and the offline lectures across the country as per the directions of ministry, as per the directions of our Honorable Vice Chancellor. All the regional centers are organizing this particularly environment and pollution related lectures which create the awareness among the masses, among the learners, among the other stakeholders who is going to take the precautions and take the measures and involve protecting our environment for the future generation. As a present generation, we may enjoy this one. Maybe next generation may not get this fresh and purified water or the air. Everything is polluted due to our activities. There, our Indira Gandhi National Open University main objective is organizing this type of webinars particularly to create the awareness among the, our IGNO learners and other stakeholders of IGNO and other people also because of we are going to upload this uh, lecture in our YouTube channel where we are having more than the 5,000 subscribers and we are going to post it in the 
our twitter account also where we are having more than the 5000 followers and we are going to post in the facebook page where we are having about the 10000 followers it 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 going to reach more than the 20 30000 of the people where they will get the awareness that is the main objective of organizing this type of the lectures if the 56 regional centers of indira gandhi national open university across the country from kashmir to kanyakumari organizes and post in our social media and it reaches crores of the people where we are going to add to value to our great india that is the main objective of organizing this type of the uh, online webinars particularly our honorable vice chancellor is very much particular and interest about organizing this type of the particular awareness creating as you are all know igno is introducing are already introduced so many programs related to the environment and related to the this other uh, social related uh, information related programs skill based programs employment oriented programs awareness programs as a part of it we are organizing today this webinar with the help of professor sandeep kolkarni ji uh, who uh, accepted our invitation sir we are very thankful to you for accepting our invitation and delivering your valuable lecture on this important topic uh, thank you sir uh, i i welcome you all and i request you please speak on the uh, bopal gas uh, tragedy and uh, give your valuable uh, suggestions for the future generation also thank you thank you one and all thank you sir thank you very much and i am indeed very happy to be a part of this session here and uh, first of all i would like to uh, thank uh, rao sir for inviting me here uh, without uh, wasting much of time uh, i would like to uh, begin with my presentation uh, i hope i am audible to all of you yes sir yeah okay i am going to share uh, ppt since uh, sir was telling about uh, creating awareness regarding environment and uh, pollution related aspects uh, yes this is an awareness session uh, uh, conducted uh, on online platform uh, i am uh, my uh, my background is uh, from environment studies itself environmental science so i'm happy to uh, learn study about the uh, these aspects um uh, i hope uh, the session will be a very fruitful uh, session for you all and you will gain a lot uh, uh, from this uh, let us begin the title here it uh, says the tank e610 it sounds interesting that uh, it, it seems that as if i'm going to talk about engineering aspect here something related to design and infrastructural engineering and all no nothing like that let's begin and uh, slowly gradually come to know what i mean to say i'm going to uh, tell a story which took place in the year 1984 it took uh, place in the place called as uh, bhopal which is the capital of uh, madhya pradesh one of the state in india uh, states in india and uh, the exact location is the union carbide india limited ucil which is a pesticide manufacturing uh, company which was a uh, pesticide manufacturing co company in bhopal and uh, what happened there was uh, the, one of the worst uh, uh, industrial disaster uh, where methyl isocyanate which is uh, shortly known as mic but ex, uh, uh, exposed and uh, many people uh, got affected with this um, gas 
and uh, we'll see how and when uh, it started along. Uh, Union Carbide, this company, uh, Union Carbide India Limited, UCIL, was built in 1969. And in 1979, uh, they added up the production of MIC. MIC whenever I say MIC, it means methyl isocyanate, the chemical component. Uh, uh, but in those times, uh, uh, Bayer company was not manufacturing uh, the compound called as carbyl, uh, carbyl, carbaryl, sorry. Uh, carbaryl you can see here in the bottom there is a, a structure design uh, they used to manufacture uh, carbaryl uh, without using uh, methyl isocyanate but uh, this company uh, UCIL uh, continued using uh, MIC uh, and they manufactured a product called as uh, Sevin which is which was used as uh, pesticide insect to kill the pests now how it is manufactured uh, methyl amine is reacted with phosgene, uh, uh, then its seal is lost, and there is a compound, unstable compound formed in between. And further heating, uh, you uh, lose out still a, a, a few molecules of HCl, and then uh, methyl isocyanate compound is formed. Now, this methyl isocyanate compound is reacted with one naphthol, uh, another compound in presence of suitable ca catalyst to uh, get carbaryl. This is the compound, which is, uh, if you could see the my cursor, uh, this is a compound which is uh, formed. And this compound is uh, sold by this uh, UCL company in, uh, uh, in the name of the uh, brand called as Seven. Now UCL and government of India had a deal. Uh, UCL company had around 50.9% company share and there were Indian investors uh, who had 40.1% shares. Then that's all fine, the company was fu uh, functioning, but the uh, problem started in somewhere 1976. It was not exactly 1984, but it was well before that, some eight, eight years back. Uh, in 1976, trade unions com uh, complained about pollution within the plant. Uh, the temporary precautions might have been taken and then it was later on, uh, the things might have been uh, repaired, etc. But then um, nothing much happened till 1981, where uh, 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 severely uh, a worker got uh, splashed with phosgene accidentally. And he died uh, within 72 hours. But then uh, that uh, within that uh, span of time, a journalist who got this information and then he studied and then he came up with uh, his uh, article in uh, the local newspaper stating that wake up people of Bhopal, you are on the edge of a volcano. Then in 82, Fosjin again was exposed to some 24 workers who were not using any protective uh, equipments, personal protective equipments. Then in February 82, uh, again, 18 workers were affected by MIC. Then 82, again, uh, in the same, the same year, you can see how many people were affected till October, uh, uh, including the uh, chief engineers or workers or people who handled, etc. Like and uh, subsequent year, 83 to 84, there were leakages of MIC, chlorine, monomethyl, methyl, amine, phosgene, carbon tetrachloride, and sometimes in combination of these gases. So some of the other leakages was happening. Then uh, this MIC uh, was uh, stored in, uh, in E6 tank number E610, E611, and E619. And there, these, these were three underground uh, tanks, which contained around 68,000 liters of MIC. Now, this uh, liquid MIC production was in progress. And uh, the company rule says that not no uh, single tank should be uh, containing more than 50% of the liquid MIC. That means it should be always less than that. And uh, the rest of the 50% should be filled up with uh, inert uh, nitrogen gas so that uh, 
no impurities get mixed up with it and there will be no moisture getting mixed up with uh, MIC because mo moisture or water when it mix up with uh, MIC there will uh, there will be uh, change in the temperature sudden change in the temperature and all, all the gas will uh, explode explode then October uh, in then in uh, October 1984 this tank uh, E60 uh, had the nitrogen pressure which was very very less which was and then because of this uh, less pressure uh, pressure of inert gas uh, that MIC was not uh, uh, MIC could not be pumped out easily because the gas and gas they will easily you know help in each other and then you can suck it is uh, uh, suck it from the top but uh, since the pressure was less the MIC could not uh, come out now what is the problem here I'll tell you that MIC uh, is heavier than what uh, air. So as it is, uh, you can see here, uh, and it, that it is heavier uh, in room temperature. So what happens? It will even if you put it in the tank, it will occupy the lower portion of the tanks. It will not come up, come up easily like other gases. Uh, you, you, the LPG gas which we have at home. So what happens is that the pressure from the bottom also comes up. I mean, even if the gas is about to get over, still the last portion of the gas uh, comes to the nozzle, isn't it? But here, the, uh, that, those, that, that is not happening. The, because the very ca characteristic property of uh, MIC is that it is denser than air and it settles down. So uh, why not? Uh, why the nitrogen gas is used? That is to pull the uh, MIC from bottom, but that was not getting pumped up. And then uh, there was a failure. There, was, but it contained 42 tons of uh, liquid MIC in, inside, and instead of 30 tons, so uh, the MIC content was more, and the nitrogen pressure was also less. And uh, they they didn't pay attention, and then they ju just kept it aside, and then they changed their idea and uh, MIC production was halted and then uh, they went for uh, complete shutdown for maintenance purposes. So uh, the uh, maintenance was done by removing the corroded pipes uh, then uh, but carburetor production uh, again resumed in November 84 that is only just one month within the one month span they started the production. Uh, an attempt to, to re-establish pressure in tank. Again, they wanted to, you know, uh, create the pressure which was required in the tank so that uh, they can uh, pump out the MIC. But that was not happening. On 1st December, they noticed that there is a failure. And why this failure was? This was because of malfunctioning of the valves and the lines, in, uh, lines which are in poor condition. And the uh, vent gas scrubber, which you can see on uh, the image also you can see on the right hand side. This is a uh, gas scrubber. Gas scrubber means what? Uh, what? It's an instrument which uh, captures the unwanted uh, solid or liquid material uh, from the gas and it purifies it. So when the uh, clean gas passes through it, it goes up in the atmosphere. So it's mostly the carbon dioxide or SO2, NO2, but they're all under control, of course. So uh, they needs to be they need to be cleaned. The gases needs to be cleaned, and then the rest of the things should go up. But this the, this entire unit, what you can see here in this image, was, which is called as vent gas scrubber, it was under maintenance. Even the steam boiler was also under maintenance. Then late evening to uh, hours of uh, 2nd December 1984, the unfortunate day, uh, what happened was water was believed to have entered in the tank E610. And uh, from where it entered, it is still a uh, matter of uh, research. But the people say that it could be from uh, via side pipe during an attempt to unclog it. So there was a pipe, a water pipe nearby, and from there it might have entered. Of course, water pipes are there uh, in and around the entire uh, plants, uh, the chemical uh, plants. That's not a new thing, but uh, this is a suspect. Then uh, 42 tons of MIC was already there, as I told you, and that was lying in that tank uh, since October. Uh, October, okay. So that tank 
suddenly what happened there was a runaway uh, uh, exothermic reaction a runaway exothermic reaction is large amount of uh, heat is liberated in this reaction and the temperature increases suddenly and uh, this was due to contaminants um, it is it was also due to the ambient temperature with uh, in the nearby areas and also due to some pre presence of uh, iron from where did that iron come iron means iron compounds from where did it come it co came from the corroding pipelines so these are all the, uh, the things which added to that problem then uh, the pressure of the tank uh, which was uh, 14 kilo pascals at 10 pm it suddenly rose to 70 kilo pascals by 11 pm then the two senior uh, uh, staff members they um, uh, monitored it and then they said that no the it couldn't this pressure is not possible because then uh, the unit which uh, the gauge might have been uh, impaired so as a result uh, this is not a true value the pressure is under control that is what they felt but then at 11 30 uh, some workers felt that there's some smell coming out from this tank etc like that and then uh, at 11 45 they were uh, within the 15 minutes they were searching for from where that smell is coming and they could find it out then they all went for a uh, tea break so that they could discuss and uh, see how uh, they can stop this uh, uh, gas leaking out from the tank etc and then uh, after the tea break the situation have went beyond their uh, control and the reaction reached a critical uh, state at an alarming speed and the temperature now it is 25 degrees celsius and the pressure is 280 kilopascal just imagine when it was just 14 kilopascal it reached to 70 kilopascal and now it is 280 kilopascals the severe pressure is severe and one of the workers uh, saw that the concrete slab above the uh, tank got cracked and now the pressure uh, which has been increased was uh, showing as 380 kilopascals now this pressure could have been uh, reduced this pressure could have been under control with the use of freon freon is a coolant uh, general, uh, which was used in uh, which, are, which is used in acs and uh, uh, coolant even in uh, cars etc wherever there is heating wherever the machines are heated their coolants are used so this freon you can see in uh, the bottom image here on the right hand side the green color cylinder so this contained freon so similar this is just a small ac unit but actual in industry there is a big freon uh, this big containers big coolants uh, which uh, uh, sets the temperature of the uh, tank around 11 degrees celsius but uh, here due to this uh, all malfunctioning and uh, due to this abnormalities in the functioning the temperature uh, rose to uh, somewhere around 40 degrees celsius then uh, the uh, flare uh, tower, the flare tower you can see on the right hand side again the image, uh, the fire which has coming out from that chimney. Okay, this is called as flare, uh, flare uh, tower. Then this is all, this was also under maintenance. As a result, uh, something could have been burnt and some, you know, at least that gas could have uh, been diverted to this uh, uh, tower and then it could have gone somewhere above. But it, even that was also not possible. And then, uh, you know, the vent scrubber was deactivated and uh, the, the vent scrubber should have got that caustic soda, which is uh, maintained, which is required to, you know, suck the impurities. But even that was uh, insufficient. Then uh, within this, uh, all this havoc, uh, 30 tons of MIC escaped into the atmosphere within that uh, one hour. And again, uh, further within two hours, 40 tons of uh, MIC escaped and this gas uh, moved towards southwest southeast of uh, Bhopal city now this is a, a, a design which I would like to show you that uh, you can see on the le left uh, top portion went uh, gas scrubber uh, where uh, where you know the scrubbing was about to take place that was also under maintenance so as a result this e610 e611 and c E619. Okay, these uh, tanks, you know, they, which contained the MIC. Okay, they were diverted. I mean, uh, they could have been diverted and then, you know, uh, some impurities could have been removed from that using that scrubber. But that scrubber itself was under maintenance. 
Then flare tower, which you can see on the right hand side, even that was under maintenance. Refrigeration system, you can see on the bottom, that uh, that is also under, uh, uh, that was not uh, available. That was, uh, you know, the production was stopped in 1982. Then with it, with this, with all these kinds of uh, lacunas, with all these kinds of shortages, how will that MIC get arrested? It was very difficult. And over that, water has got mixed up with uh, MIC. Uh, impurities have got mixed up. So with all these uh, things, obviously the pressure of MIC is going to increase. And the that has increased all of a sudden. And then at the 12.50, as I told you, within one hour, that's time period. Then there was a uh, alarm system got triggered. I mean, the, uh, they triggered it or they had automatic alarm, alarm triggering. We don't know. But that alarm was triggered. But the fact is that there were two alarm systems, one inside the plant and the one, um, the other one facing towards the city of Bhopal. But what uh, what problem they created or the, for themselves was that in 1982, they decoupled it. Decoupled means they separated the two sirens. So the only siren which was uh, 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 making the noise was inside the plant, means in the company, uh, people outside, uh, in, uh, outside that factory or the people in Bhopal, they don't know what's going on. And then uh, here in this image, you can see on the bottom, you know, workers were start, workers were evacuated from the uh, UCIL plant. And then the town inspector called the uh, SP, superintendent of police uh, of Bhopal, uh, at 1 p.m. and said that, uh, see, uh, uh, residents of Chola, play, Chola is a place, uh, which is two kilometers away from this place, uh, were fleeing, means running away. What happened? I don't know. Then uh, the uh, police called the UCI, uh, UCIL plant, the company. Hey, what happened? Uh, why people are running there? And they said uh, they gave to us. No, everything is okay. Nothing, no problem. Two times they said like that. And then third time when they were, they realized that a big mistake had happened with uh, that the big problem um, uh, has happened. And then uh, nobody can stop it or nobody can help them in this situation. They said that we don't know what has happened. So because of this mis misinformation, UCIL and the city authorities, then uh, the Hamidia uh, hospital, which was, I'll show you in the map, okay, uh, was told that, uh, look, uh, ammo uh, ammonia gas, uh, we suspect that ammonia gas might have got le leaked. Uh, the second time they're saying that it could be phosgene, not ammonia. Then third time they're saying that this is M MIC and not phosgene. The hospital staff, uh, they had never heard about what is this MIC. And then they, they said that we don't have uh, antidote for that. That means no, no uh, medicine which could uh, cure uh, the patient if he is suffering from uh, the effect of MIC. Then the uh, leakage was, was so huge that at around 2 a.m. it was uh, spreading everywhere. And what happened? And the things happened where were not wanted. Over 5 lakh people were exposed to MIC. There were 3,787 immediate deaths. Injuries were more than 5 lakhs. Partial injuries were somewhere around 38,000. And permanently disabled injuries were around 4,000. Within two weeks, 8,000 people died. And later on, uh, after two weeks, again 8,000 people died because of gas related diseases. Now here, the problem is that it, it may not be necessarily just the gas which has entered into the body of the person and then he has died it. It could be because of stampede also. It could be because of people don't know where they're running. They might have fallen somewhere. They might have, they might have, um, they are healthy, but they might have uh, met an accident somewhere and died. And here, the most problematic, if you see, even in the images, image of the, even if this, uh, you are able to see this black and white image, um, you can see uh, small children are there. Around 2 lakh ch children were exposed to this gas. And why? What is the reason? Why children? The reason is that this gas, as I told you, it is very denser than air. When it escapes from the tank, it will occupy the lowermost portion of the uh, area. Like wherever you, you are sitting, okay, and you, your height is around five feet. 
so the gas will occupy the uh, area of your waist okay waist or knee so children height is that much only na so they will easily uh, inhale that gas if they're standing in that uh, locality isn't it i hope you are getting me what i'm saying so uh, to reach to an adult it will take little bit time but obviously the adult is also going to suffer that's that is there but the fact is that uh, the gas spreads like this and see the images they are all you know making you cry they are all horrible so many people died the entire family has uh, lost their life and you can see over the image on the top here that father has been you know uh, uh, applied that cotton because it immediately because this gas immediately first affects eyes and then it enters to the respiratory system and then it damages and then due to suffocation people die you can see small children dead many this this is hospital area where so many deaths have taken place ah, this is a map where you can see uh, the union carbide is written on the top so this uh, company is located on the northern portion of uh, bhopal city so this map is uh, is of bhopal city and you can see the areas called as shakti nagar kaichi kuchola uh, then some colony then ram mandir rajgarh colony like that these are the areas which are, which are affected the most and you can see the uh, see this hospital also hamidia hospital okay in the dot which is towards the southwest of the company and this is about the city but here the problem was that uh, you now you know uh, the locations all these locations and you know location of unit people didn't realize what problem was there and from where that gas is coming and they were in fact running towards the company itself they thought that uh, that uh, the uh, gas is coming from the opposite direction say from the southwest direction but they were moving towards uh, northwest where the company where the actual company was there and there that methyl isocyanate was uh, cyanide got released so this is how i mean people should have what uh, warning before and then they at least they could have saved their life but you, as i told you that siren was not working and this and that etc problems and then literally the uh, the employees had to run from the company and then inform the people that look uh, gas has released and this has happened and that has happened and they didn't know what uh, uh, whom to contact because it was night everyone is sleeping what dreadful effect this gas uh, has done it you know it causes coughing severe eye irritation suffocation etc and a burning sensation in respiratory tracts then something called as blepharospasm what is this blepharospasm you can see on this image right hand side the two eyes of that man okay uh, what happens uh, when this gas is there in in, in this uh, in, in in your locality in your vicinity you are not able to close your eyes your eyes you know get, remain open as if somebody is holding your eyelids open and when you close it you can't open it so this is how that uh, contraction and the relaxation of the mu eyelid muscles is lost so this is what happened and then then stomach pain and vomiting etc the people who were in vehicles were less affected but people who are who were running got affected more the primary cause of death was uh, choking uh, reflexogenic uh, choking of you know uh, throat etc throat and the pharynx pharynx area <coughs> then reflexogenic circulatory collapse was uh, uh, took place reflex means what the lungs has to uh, pump uh, efficiently right so either it was uh, just open or it was just closed and then pulmonary uh, edema also people suffered the pulmonary edema means what fluid gets collected in the lungs okay the gas gets uh, converted into liquid and then it uh, you know gets deposited in the inner walls of the this one then moisture also gets uh, arrested there in the lungs then autopsy also was conducted when the, of the dead people and then uh, data revealed that there was cerebral edema also that means what fluid was filled in brain also as a result brain uh, you know inflammation took place 
and people died because of that also then there was tubular necrosis necrosis means breaking of the tissues so the tubes which are there in the kidney those tubes got you know broken you can see on the right hand side here in the image tubule okay and then damaged by ichemia or the toxins so there was breakage it is the tube is not intact okay and uh, obviously when the tube, uh, internal organs they when they they get cut or they, when they are broken and something like this happen everything will ooze out and then uh, person will die there was even uh, tubular necrosis of entrises also that you can see this baby image uh, which has got an inflamed, uh, in, inflamed uh, bowel. Why? Because the intestinal linings which are there in the uh, baby's body, those linings are also cut. I mean, the intestine walls are cut because of uh, this uh, gas. And those who didn't uh, uh, immediately come in contact with this gas, but they suffered cancer, blindness, and they lost livelihood and financial strength. Then what immediate effect was the uh, immediate response uh, uh, was done that government of India, they closed the plant and they did not allow the actual data or uh, to, you know, uh, go to the public. Uh, and uh, th this created confusion among the people. Then what happened when this uh, company uh, head CEO Warren Anderson, he, he's the CEO of this company. He came from America. Okay. And then the CSIR, uh, Council of Social, uh, Council of Science and uh, Scientific and Industrial Research, then CBI, they all came there to, from India, uh, to India, to this place to see what has happened. And when Anderson came to India, uh, he was house arrested. And then the Indian government said that you leave the country within 24 hours, otherwise, people will kill you because they are very angry now. Okay. And then what happens is that the Union Carbide with their international medical experts and the other experts, they came to the place to assess what has happened and how the gas got leaked, etc. And they wanted to check everything. And but when people were suffering heavily, so in some places, you know, nearly 70% of the doctors who were appointed to treat the people, they were not uh, fully qualified. Then even after that incident, uh, even in 86 or eight, uh, 90s or uh, in this century also, people still remember that disaster and they are not able to forget it. They say that the suffering continues, so does the struggle. You can see the images where people are still uh, coming out with banners and then they're protesting against the government. In English, it is said that justice delayed is justice denied. But in this case, justice is delayed also and justice is denied also. Even after 35 years, Bhopal gas tragedy victims are not given the just proper just justice. You can see, uh, if you see the image on the left hand top corner, that baby, okay, its eyes are just open. Why? Because it cannot be closed. That I said, no, that. Uh, blastospasm has taken place and uh, uh, due to MI, MIC, you know, that child died, but it was buried by somebody who, who buried, nobody knows. And on the right hand side also, you can see the images of the skeletons packed in this wax. So, of course, these photographers, they got the international recognition and then they won the, won the awards, etc. like that. But that is not the achievement. Uh, government uh, affidavit in 2006, they said that uh, uh, 5 lakh uh, 58,125 was injured. So there was 38,000 something partial and then 3,000 permanent this one. Then in 2008, Madhya Pradesh government paid the compensation to just 3,787 victims and uh, the other injured people. So even, of course, at governmental level, I don't say that uh, the government was not in, having the intention to pay the compensation, etc. But there are technical difficulties also. Now, I mean, nowadays, you have every um, uh, good way of communications, etc. You are able to locate the person, this and that. Now, nowadays, as I said, the other card, this and that card is available. Exact location of the person, exact income, exact something you can make out. But that those times were not 
so feasible for the uh, administration department to take care of now you can see uh, these the un, the child which was born you know he had some defects in those time but uh, that uh, the small baby is kept in you know as a, a sample in uh, medical hospitals okay on the right hand side you can see thousands of children were born with birth defects even after the tragedy because on those time uh, the women were might be pregnant who have inhaled and but this are women survived that also quite be possible or else the other way around the uh, mic might have entered into the food chain and then you know the for even after 84 the that uh, chemical might have affected the entire city in some or the other way and then that is how it has caused the birth defects now don't you count don't you count these sufferings as well why only deaths death is also one factor which shouldn't have happened death and this kind of thing injuries financial losses trauma etc are uh, a big problem you can see here uh why only human beings when the plants uh, they dried up and then the land got barren after uh, some days the domestic animals the pet animals the other animals etc they all died and even they were also buried some or the other in some or the other places fishing was prohibited because even water nearby water you saw uh, in bhopal there is a lake so that water also got uh, affected because of that gas so this is how uh, problem um, devastation happened and uh, later on in 1985 the government uh, they themselves uh, uh, you know it's called as suo moto in legal language means what they stood uh, along with the victims and then they uh, uh, raised an issue and they took the company to the court of law then us uh, uh, government uh, in in us similar kind of case was going on uh, in 1880 just you can see march 8 1985 indian government uh, um, filed a case and in say uh, april 1885 18, uh, april 1985 us government filed a case against that company and judge in us said that you have to pay something between 5 to 10 uh, us uh, million in million us dollars the company said that no uh, uh, we don't we, we are not going to constitute anything any um, uh, admission of liability admission of liability means that responsibility of the company to pay the uh, losses whatever has taken place but they said that we are not going to pay it they said they will just pay 5 million uh, uh, relief funds in 2 uh, days that's it but the indian government said that we don't want that and then uh, court case was going on going on going on and in 1988 then the supreme court said that why don't you uh, go for a agreement proper agreement finish up this people are uh, you know people want justice they want their uh, compensation etc this and that then indian carbide said that okay we'll just pay 470 million us dollar for the damage and that was paid immediately then uh, the indian government was asked to you know uh, cover up medical insurance policy for the 1 lakh people uh, who may develop similar kind of uh, symptoms and that is similar kind of problems if they face in future they should be treated for that you know the uh, insurance company shouldn't say that no no the, those kind of uh, diseases are not covered and uh, covered under uh, our policy uh, which come from that bhopal gas tragedy no such kind of things should not happen and that is why Uh, the government was instructed and like later on ucil was also said that you have to fund the hospitals in the bhopal and they said okay we'll pay 17 million more uh, 17 million dollar us dollar more to combat this situation but later on uh, what happened that uh, in 1991 uh, bhopal uh, the, the case was going on anderson who was ceo he got retired in uh, 1986 and uh, uh, he was not appearing in the court then uh, government of india said that uh, said to us that uh, uh, he should be sent because he, so for so many times he has been asked to uh, come to appear in the court he has not come so um, yeah he has been uh, this one he is an extra right so what the uh, us said that uh, no no there is no evidence of evidence against him uh, stating that he is a culprit so we will not send him so even even us government uh, supported him in uh, and protected him in that case then later on us go uh, in case in us court 
the, uh, the UCC company said that, see, uh, whatever pollution has created, this, uh, whether it is soil or water pollution, that does not come, uh, comes under our purview. It is all the responsibility of the state government. Now, this is also one of the problem they added up. Then later on, you know, uh, CBI filed the charge sheet against uh, Anderson. It was a lot, uh, lot many people uh, across uh, the country. They were saying that we uh, Anderson should be hanged. He should be killed. He should be uh, punished severely like that, like that. So people were raise, raising their voice. So CBI charged uh, uh, seat, uh, against Anderson. And then you, Union Carbide said that uh, uh, this case is not the your company itself is not come on, coming under Indian jurisdiction. So how can the case can be lodged against us? So that is also correct. Legally they are correct. Okay. Then uh, uh, when Anderson uh, two years later when Anderson uh, K uh, uh, I mean two years later when non available warrant of arrest was uh, issued uh, he ignored it. But uh, then he was he came here. Then uh, he was sent to UCC house, and then after six hours, you know, uh, he paid that uh, something that bail amount to uh, 2,100 uh, US dollar bail, and then by government uh, plane he went away. He never returned to India, and he recently died in 2014 at the age of 92. So that means what the uh, devil's age is more in this uh, Kaliuga, I can say like that. So uh, in 2010, you know, the other employees who were also responsible uh, and because of their negligence or whatever it is, people died. So they were also imprisoned and then they were also fined of uh, rupees uh, one lakh that they were released, uh, shortly released after the word, verdict. They, why? Because their, their age was around 70, 80 years. How, how will those uh, old people uh, survive in the prison also? So as of now, say that is two, after 2014, uh, Dow is uh, named a respondent in a number of ongoing cases arising from Union Carbide's business in Bhopal. That means what? That Union Carbide was uh, purchased by Dow company. And now uh, Dow with the new company and new uh, CEO uh, doing the same business. Okay. So as a result, now the co case will not stand. Uh, okay. Because the case was on Union Carbide. Now, Union Carbide business is not there. So, what will you do on your Within this, all these uh, issues, what we are discussing right now, where is, where was the CM of the Madhya Pradesh? At that time, Arjun Singh was the CM and he was in Kerwa uh, Dam Palace outside Bhopal. <laughs> Coincidence? And now uh, his grandson, you know this fellow, you all know this fellow, Arunadeh Singh, is an actor in Bollywood. No, I'm not against anyone. I'm not speaking uh, about any any uh, individual or the political party or anything like that. I'm just neutral. I'm just giving you this information. But it is a responsibility of the person, right? See huh, but there are two main uh, lines of arguments. One is about the corporate negligence. Where the people says that uh, people say that company should have provided the uh, proper safeguarding things. For company should have provided all the do, should have done maintenance properly, and uh, workers should have been provided with all the safety equipments, etc., like that. But at the same time, the UCC company in the court they say that uh, that uh, okay that that is all true. But the fact is that uh, who you know uh, mixed that water with uh, MIC, which was not supposed to be done. That means what the employee himself have done it. And here the government took extensive action to hide this uh, possibility. That is what they are accusing. So it is not a, a uh, UCC single-handedly UCC responsible for this. That is what they are saying. And there are, the theories differ as to how the water entered the tank. This is still a matter of uh, question. So people have been make, doing uh, speculations uh, to understand how and what has happened. But uh, what environmental effect it has caused? Groundwater pollution, soil and water uh, pollution, because of which fishes also have died in 1989. Then 100 so wells, uh, uh, you know, are uh, 
are not fit for uh, drinking the well water is not fit for drinking then 21% uh, of the factory factory premises were seriously contaminated with chemicals and in 1999 again it shows that heavy metals the com chemical compounds like naphthol naphthalene even the seven uh, then alpha naphthol mercury uh, bhc volatile organic compound all these things are uh, present in the environment then also contaminants are still present in uh, were present in the breast milk of the women also living nearby areas in that those localities so <clears throat> these are all the environmental effect it had uh, the catastrophe still continues you know uh, studies have shown that uh, long term health effects are are being uh, are visible and what are those uh, health effects uh, when it comes to eyes, it, uh, there are uh, uh, people suffer from chronic, chronic conjunctivitis. There are there are scars on cornea. There are corneal uh, opacities, uh, early cataracts. These are all the, the uh, effects of MIC. Then uh, respiratory tracts uh, diseases, the neurological diseases, psychological problems, and children health, etc., have been reported. Then uh, what government did uh, after this? Uh, uh, problem they uh, i mean they wanted to prevent uh, such kind of uh, hazards in future also they brought up uh, the environment protection act in 1986 then public liability uh, insurance act 1991 that means what if in a company uh, uh, because of any company's uh, uh, pollution etc uh, if people are getting affected the company will pay the uh, liability like that then the chemical accident rule 1996 hazardous rules 2008 the national green tribunal act 2010 etc came into picture just imagine that uh, these, these uh, acts came only after 1984 bhopal gas tragedy uh, what what bhopal gas tragedy has taught us the decision to turn off the safety systems turned out to cause more destruction than it should have now, sometimes what happens is that Things meant for safety also causes uh, uh, insecurity for us. Uh, you might have heard, in, you might have seen also in news, uh, uh, the uh, car, you know, sometimes in uh, uh, car catches fire from inside. And uh, since the, the doors are locked, uh, a person here uh, sitting inside is not able to open it. And as a result, um, the entire car, car catches fire. Of course, safety features are there to main, uh, for the people. But sometimes the safety system itself can cause problems. Also, corporation do not uh, corporations do not have to pay for the crime they commit. That is what you know UCC company did because rules are not there. Where is the rule that it says that UCC was supposed to pay this much and that much? No. So legal system is also should uh, be sensitive enough. Legal system is uh, legal system not always uh, will protect the victims. Then uh, the polluters uh, do not always have to pay. You know? Legal system says that. Then uh, main lesson is that uh, dangers of the chemical that we use even today, whatever the future, whatever their future, aren't they harm harmful in future? Think about it. Now Dow Chemical is the new chemical uh, new company, so that's running. Then in uh, Ingrid. Uh, Eckerman uh, book say one of the victims says that death would have been a great relief. It's worse that worse to be a survivor. Just imagine the pain, the sorrow, the, the agony that person is undergoing, or many people undergoing. Thousands of survivors in the Bhopal gas tragedy continue to face a lack of healthcare facilities even today. And when the factory was closed, as I told you, the factory was closed by the government of India. Now that is still remain uh, closed. It is not even opened uh, from inside. Nobody knows what is there inside. And this gas victim welfare organization, they want to see actual problem kiska hai. But government wants to save its skin, so they will not open it. Joseph Stalin says that one death is a tra tragedy, a million deaths is a statistics. You can see the small boy uh, getting bath from bath, but uh, limbs and uh, both hands and legs are not working. I hope it was uh, uh, you know informative for you all. These are the references, uh, sources of references from which I got this information. 
ultimately i would say that be happy may all beings everywhere be happy and free and may the thoughts words and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and to that freedom for all thank you thank you all so thank you for your wonderful informative uh, session mm-hmm. particularly from the uh, beginning to end that you have narrated with uh, pictures and all the information uh, now uh, i request uh, the participants any uh, clarifications any doubts you are having please uh, ask good afternoon sir can i ask a doubt yeah, yeah good please, go ahead please uh, some my doubt is that if a similar situation occurs in future if uh, anywhere like so for example at present my house is near midc so uh, in the night if so, some incident happens like a, a, any kind of gas leak it will take time for me to acknowledge myself about what will be consequences so what will be the first aid i should take in case of uh, such incident the first response i should do uh see there are uh, it, it is not the first thing what we can say because at that moment uh, what should be the first thing we should do it's not so easy but yes we have com- good communication system today at least we can inform the police first you inform the police that look uh, some some i'm uh, able to smell or we are able to smell some uh, uh, bad gas etc here we don't know from where it is coming uh, you uh, take the charge first inform the police and later on uh when you get the information that look uh, that you are supposed to run away to this direction or that direction just leave the things from your house and with all your family members or the near, the near neighboring people you have to just run to the safe place don't think about money or don't think about uh, uh, mobile or any other uh, things which you feel that it is uh, valuable at that moment life is the only precious thing at that moment so save the life and run away so these two things at least you can do it that's the most thing okay sure sir thank you yeah. there's a de- there are disaster management uh, courses available uh, you know there are special complete specialization in uh, post graduation uh, in disaster management as well or uh, there are some diploma courses etc in disaster management so uh, people need to be taught about these things uh, i think the uh, n- not the disaster like what we have seen here but uh, i uh, you know so, so, some small uh, di- disaster it may take place in our uh, college or in our office or, or in the place of residence like that you know a building catches fire or there was there is you know uh, some uh, electrical uh, uh, short circuits etc any kind of uh, uh life threatening uh, event may happen so in that situation what a person should do so in fact that person should uh, person or group of people or people living there should get some some of the other kind of training and this is available today so people should undergo those such kind of training even uh, why about why, why not this uh, you know uh, you all have this uh, fire extinguisher at your uh, in your offices or in your i don't know what uh, pratik or other people are doing but i will just say that you in, in your office or in your college there are fire extinguishers why don't you uh, learn to operate them at least the people they are very happy to uh, come and uh, you know give training to you all people so fire extinguishers the people who are who have installed those uh, units in your uh, organization they will come and uh, give the uh, training also how to operate it at so you know, that can be done that is the simplest way we have to start with and uh, later on first aid is also more, most important after that either it, due to burns or due to uh, any kind of injuries you know uh, people need first aid so what kind of first aid should be given so all these trainings can be taken any other i think dr babita shima is also there babita she is a academic counselor mr ranjit kumar any other is having you can ask 
Okay, thank you, Ranjit Kumar, for the yeah. Ranjit Kumar, Varmati, you have any clarifications you want to ask? Okay, uh, sir, it is once again appreciated and very thankful to you for delivering such a wonderful informative session. I can say uh, I also not aware about this much. Uh, this, uh, even though we are reading, but uh, very uh, from the beginning, say you have uh, explained it very, very, very. Uh, neatly, as well as it is very clear uh, on behalf of Indira Gandhi National Open University Regional Center of Mumbai as a regional director, I, I sincerely thank you for spending your valuable time and uh, delivering such a wonderful uh, lecture on very, very important issue which this present generation need to learn and aware about our environment and other aspects. Yeah, thank you, sir. I, thank also, you. I also thank our academic counselors and our regional center staff and the students for spending your time and attending this meeting. Thank you to everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. We are closing this meeting. The same video we upload in our social media, which reaches so many students. Thank you.